Um, and I think the EID mandate is probably the best example of who the NCBA is and how they operate. Because if you remember back in uh, 2023 is when the, when the rule was announced or introduced. And um, a few weeks after the rule was introduced was the NCBA convention. And if you remember during that convention, both the USDA and NCBA did everything they possibly could to put the fear of God into you about foot and mouth disease. They would say it's any day now we could see foot and mouth disease show up in our cattle herds. It, I remember someone said it may al already be here and we don't even know it. And it would destroy the industry and the only way we could save ourselves is electronic ID ear tags. A few weeks after that convention, the USDA happened to give the NCBA $445,396 to strengthen the beef traceability program. There was no explanation of how that money was going to strengthen the program or what it would really be used to. It was just almost a half a million dollars handed over from between friends, really. Um, and if you go on throughout the year, well, a few weeks after that, um, they extended the comment period. Actually, I think it was a few days after that. They gave that money and then they extended the comment period, which made me think they're wanting NCBA members to comment on this USDA rule and say that they're in for it. USDA president had multiple op-eds. They went throughout the whole year kind of promoting this idea that we had to have EID tags or the industry would be destroyed by a disease. And then we come to this year's um, NCBA convention and they introduce a policy that would mandate all cattle to have an electronic identification ear tag by the year 2026. But people found out about it and the industry, a number of people made calls, a number of people in this room um, kind of raised hell about it. Corbett Wall every day on his feeder flash kind of explained what it was and what it was about and, and it was able to be stopped. Um, and they were not able to pass any policy that mandated electronic ID tags. But even though the entire industry kind of showed that they, this is not what they wanted, a couple of weeks after their convention, um, the omnibus comes out and there's $15 million in it, in this bill, that to pay for mandated electronic ID tags that have not yet been mandated. And the NCBA puts out a press release that they are for the, they are for the omnibus and they want Congress to pass it. Um, and then once it gets passed, they put out another press release kind of bragging about how they got that $15 million in there to pay for these mandated ear tags that you have told them that you don't want, forcing the US taxpayer to pay for the tags that you don't want. Um, and then a few days ago, I've got to get my clicker here. A congressman uh, put this on Twitter. USDA is mandating electronic ID tags in cattle without congressional authorization. This is the beginning of the end of the independent cattlemen. But Farm Bureau and Beef USA support it because they are the foxes watching the hen house. I tag them, let's see if they respond. Beef USA is uh, NCBA's Twitter uh, handle or whatever you want to call it. Last I checked, they did not respond. But this is someone, um, and there he retweeted Harriet Hagman, who, um, who put out what she thought about the electronic ID tags. And my apologies to anybody who showed up to see Harriet Hagman, who was supposed to be in this time slot, but I am not her. Um, but what he is telling you here, he's a congressman. He, he walks through those halls. He knows what the lobbyists are pushing for. He is telling you that even though the cattle industry did not ever vote on a policy that would support a mandate, that both Farm Bureau and Beef USA are beef checkoff contractors, and they both support it, meaning they have been lobbying for it against their own members' wishes. Um, and so um, I put a lot of this stuff, like I said, I put a lot of this stuff on YouTube when I talk about it. And um, I'm not good at responding to the comments, but I will look through there and to kind of just gauge how people feel. And I've noticed there's a lot of people that watch my stuff that um, are, have no involvement in the cattle business. They just are for some reason interested. And their comments a lot of times are confusion. Um, kind of, why is this happening? 
and you can, can, can kind of tell that they're, the cattleman is a symbol of independence and freedom and rugged individualism. And they're wondering how this happens, where the, this symbol of freedom is now kind of controlled by these corrupt um, organizations. <clears throat> 